Hello everyone and welcome to our next tutorial and today we are speaking about a subject which we've received numerous requests to do a tutorial on and that's how to use brushes in Photoshop very simplistically. So we explain um, a couple of very important brush settings and how we can use those to our benefit but we'll be dividing this up especially in three. So we're going to be talking about how to create leaves on the floor, a very basic tutorial. Uh, how to create birds in the sky just with a simple brush that we have and this brush is also provided for download in the links that you will see and also how to create your own brush and just how to change the settings and really take advantage of this brush and how you can do this instead of creating geometry for your very foreground objects so it's all about the composition once again and the inspiration and you'll see we'll use a base of uh, an image that we created uh, for CG Architect and Project Zone and that competition by the way is just about to start uh, phase two and we'll really get into it and we'll show you just how we can create these little magic things that are so simple and small but they really give something to each image so I hope you enjoy and I look forward to showing you this tutorial so let's get started on our next tutorial and just how we use our brushes and a couple of interesting brushes that we use um, and just how we can really get into it and as you can see this image is uh, it really fits well because it's it's quite sketchy and I mean if you look at it it's pretty much created with a lot of brushes and this was done for project zone so I thought nothing best but to actually give it a rip and really try something different and I thought the best thing would be actually to to have some type of, um, of leaves going here and let's let's try out a couple of the brushes so let's hit F5 and I thought let's basically create our own brush right that's the best way to get into it so I went to textures.com I downloaded uh, this image and it's it's a transparent image and I thought okay this will be great to get us going into our own brush now I'm creating a white background and I'm just filling that up I'm gonna hit control U and I'm gonna DC desaturate that image now what I want to do is kind of have this some heavy blacks and some heavy whites so quite contrasty so the brush really has some depth to it if this functions much like uh, maps reflection maps and bump maps in V-Ray and, and 3D Max you really want a sort of a contrast there to really bring it out so I think I've got a nice contrast here now let's select that and go to edit and just go into let me find it define brush preset exactly so let's call this personal brush right okay now we have our personal brush so now we've defined our brush and if we go back to our Tivoli corner that we did for project zone and we hit f5 we will find our brush somewhere along here let me put that in large thumbnail and there we go there's our brush now I've created that layer and you'll see that okay it's there now how do we get those leaves going there you know what's going on there nothing much is going on there so let's go to brush and let's start looking at our brush from the very beginning so let's kind of make our brush a little more space so we can have a look at it and we want something like this going along so we just start painting and I'm starting to see okay no that that definitely that's not working at all so okay let's look at our shape dynamics and shape dynamics is basically if you have a Wacom Mintoist pen uh, you can really use your pen pressure and we have one and we love to use it and it's uh, it's fantastic and that really helps painting and, and just how how you can get that extra dynamic um, paint style to your images so what shape dynamics will do as you can see the pen pressure will change it make a higher or lower your angle jitter will kind of add some angle now remember in drawing like everything else uh, and in nature there's a, a kind of imperfection to to the world and that's what we want to kind of recreate and flipping x uh, your x so it flips and mirrors and probably even your y so you have a bit more jitter okay and that can even be pen pressure no, let's uh, let's keep that off and just kind of randomizes it now the next thing you can do is scattering and you'll notice that you can you can come down and and scatter as much as you want now okay that's that's starting to look good but I noticed that they're all pretty much the same size so I, I might want to go back to our shape dynamic and 
and put our minimum diameter a little smaller. So that will reply, as you can see, very small pen pressure, large. When I'm pressing down very hard, it's going a lot more thick. Now, this is kind of working really well so far. So I'm quite happy with this. I mean, it's already starting to work and I can even alter this a little more, you know, and I can change it around to fit the perspective if this perspective is that way. And it's really starting to work. Now, another very important thing that I can do is I can actually add transfer. So transfer means that basically, if you set that to print pressure, it's gonna make it semi-transparent. So I have the minimum amount of transparency that I want. And if up here, you'll probably see a little better. And you see how that's gone transparent. So it's got all these other little functions that are working alongside it. And it's a, I think it's working, I think, I mean, it seems to be working. Now, imagine that you can apply this to so many things. You can apply it to ivy, to leaves, to everything really. So I'm kind of liking that at the moment. I'll select all and delete it. And now I'm starting to find, hey, wait a minute. Okay, I'm painting black here. I need to paint the color. And this is if you're looking for a rough sketch. And as you remember, um, some of the previous files that we showed you and some of the previous tutorials were quite sketchy. Um, so if you do want to have some of that, Hey, why not go to color dynamics? Now, I'm just, I'm not even gonna talk about all these because I think these are the basic ones. So if you want your color dynamics, let's put that on pen pressure and let's alternate between your foreground and background color. Now let's go and open swatches, which I already have open and that gives you a color. Now I can also just press out and that will also select a color now. Okay. I seem to have two colors. Let's see how it goes. Eh, that's okay. Maybe a bit darker. So I can just go a bit darker. And let's go and see how this works. Now you can see this is finally starting to work. I mean, I think it's looking good. It's finally got that exact amount of, um, of noise and visual noise that we always talk about that makes it look correct. And I'm really starting to like it. I mean, I can really, you can't really see too much of it because we're, <laughs> we're basically painting on top of a very rough surface. But you know, especially here, you can kind of start to see some things coming out. Now, if I want to do water, even water droplets, I mean, let's invert our colors. Let's start to, that could possibly even work. Just having that water specular that you have on top of, of when you have a puddle or that speck when you have the light hitting, and you can start to see that we're starting to create even just one brush and experimenting around with it, we can start to create some very interesting things. Now, I mean, this is, this is amazing. I just want to start, you know, experimenting around. And this is the, this is the best thing you can do with anything. It's just experiment, experiment with what you're working on experiment. I mean, it's, uh, I recommend vividly experimentation. And if there's a, there's a documentary you should see that's it's amazing. And it talks about this. It's uh, Jiro Dreams of Sushi and it's fantastic. And it talks about just how long it takes to perfect an art. And you know, there are various, uh, various artists that talk about the 10,000 hours and that t after 10,000 hours, you can consider yourself to, to have a basic mastery of something. And it, that's how long it takes to, to get to the top of an art. So again, just experiment, just try something different, see what you can do. Now you can see I'm starting to add that just that little bit of <laughs> visual noise and I'm actually kind of exaggerating here, but I'm, you know, I want to experiment. I want to see what the, this could do in various places. And I think that that kind of does our, our basic brush. There is another way, which I'm going to show you, which we can now use our brush and that's with masking. Now let's say that we want to use something different. And here's where we can use actual images. So let's pick up one of our photo packs. Uh, I think this one was the vegetation photo pack. Let's open up, let's see one that might work. Uh, let's try this one. This is just to show you how dynamic you can be and how you don't really have to always use uh, what you, you don't always have to go crazy and look at using different types of things. Now, this image you think, well, that, those colors don't really fit. Yep, they don't really fit, of course not. So let's rasterize and let's bring that in and let's show you how this can fit. So uh, I can even colorize it a little more to the saturate, 
ration I want, or I can even come here and color balance it. I mean, there is so many things I can do to, to really bring through the colors that I want. And now, here's the great thing. I mean, if I control I invert that, yeah, I can even start, start thinking about this in the various aspects that you can. You can really start to create a varied image with your brushes. I mean, look at the color changing there. But anyway, let's invert that. Let's create that mask. Uh, it, it's always important to have uh, somehow a perspective that's matching. Now, as you can see, we would, you remember we were talking about visual noise and just how we can create that visual noise. And now I've, I've brought in this image and it's got leaves in it and that's gonna help even though we've got brush you can see that the, the leaves have got some type of um, a visual noise to them. I mean, it's, it's not perfect, but you can almost tell now that there's a, a difference between that, which is textured, and that which doesn't have much texture. Now, let's bring that back in, and let's just look at what we can do with this. And again, it's, it's all about experimentation and being creative with what you're doing. So, let's try and color balance that to a little bit more where we want to go. Again, always talking about values uh, and your colors. So I think the values, the black points, may be a little bit too contrasty. But yeah, I mean, it's it's looking good. Now, very simply, I mean, this of course is super simple and there's a bit of, there's a bit of stuff going on down here, but if I just double click, I can drop shadow. I mean, that's the direction of the shadow. I put that to two. And the opacity, lower the opacity. Here we go. Distance, a little bit less. I mean, size. And I think that's about it. Now that's what's just going to add a little bit of that, that drop shadow effect. So you can see it there. Now I can even bring that up a little tad more. Now, sometimes what happens is because it's not, uh, we have this variation from the leaves and from the brush, we might even have to go into Control L on that and bring that up so it's less transparent. Now, you see this, the amount of things that I'm trying here is, is really crazy. And, and that's, that's the way it has to be. I mean, you have to just keep experimenting. Now, let me just control that, the levels, bring that back. And we have just a rough brush um, with leaves. Now let's go on to our next part. Now our next part is to simply create birds and there is no better way. Let me save that brush down here. Okay, because I created a new one. Let me get rid of that. Now I love this brush. It's working really well. Now let's go on to creating birds in the sky and this brush seems to be pretty much everywhere. And I've, I've seen it used at a lot of studios and I remember back in the day when I, I freelanced at Vionics that we, we use this brush quite a lot. And I've seen a lot of artists ha that have it and it's it's really great to create birds. And I mean, if you reverse engineer brushes and you, and you download those brushes and you start looking at how they're made, you can start to understand just how you can change things around. So let's look at our basic brush and there it is. Uh, I mean, that's without nothing. And all those shape dynamics, what they've done is basically just bring uh, more diversity and actually make it look like a um, a brush for birds. And we have, I mean, it's it's all about, again, your composition. You know, where do you want your birds to go? Where do you want? How do you want your eye to be led? Now, of course, I'm exaggerating here, but you saw that I think this was in the image to kind of create this this type of look into it. And birds can be a great element when we don't have such a diverse sky and it can really create a composition for the sky. So that's a very quick way of creating birds. These brushes will be up on our website, as you can see. And we also have a page that's dedicated to brushes. So as we're discovering brushes, we're going to put them out online. And this is free for you guys. So just enjoy it and make the most of it and keep enjoying those brushes. And next, we're going to speak of uh, using another custom brush, which I really enjoy, and creating another custom brush uh, for your vignetting. And sometimes instead of creating a very tight vignette, the best thing is to actually create a very um, specific brush that kind of brings your eye back into it. Now, I've went to textures.com, 
And again, as you can see, I downloaded uh, downloaded this semi-transparent leaf, uh, which I really enjoy. Now let's desaturate it again. Uh, okay. Now let's Control L, bring it down, make it contrasty. Remember this, guys. Just bring it down, bring those contrasts. Uh, so we have a nice defined brush. Go to your your rectangle tool, edit, define brush preset. You got your brush, 1000 pixels, it's a bit too big. So, well, I think we can get away with it. We'll just make it smaller. But anyway, so let's go to our brush. So it's been automatically added there. Uh, now let's go into our stroke thumbnail. Let's look at that brush. Uh, I mean, it's doing nothing, as you can see. Uh, it's pretty much doing nothing. Uh, I've got opacity. Now if you bring that up to 100, Okay, that's that. That's nice. So let's look at what we can do with this one. Firstly, shape dynamics. I mean, wow. Okay, I want to create something like this that brings your eye back into it. And already, I mean, look at that. Let's sample just. I mean, let's let's imagine we're in a field, right? I mean, this is not the most uh, this is not the most uh, correct visual to be experimenting on. But let's imagine we're in a field. We've all seen those houses that that show up in the middle of nowhere and they're beautiful. But this is the majority of times. This is how they're creating it. Uh, just simple brushes in the foreground, and I'll show you a little trick to also do. Now, one thing I I want to do is actually transfer. Uh, I think it could do with a bit of it's it's coming out all the same. So let's 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 do some opacity jitter with the pen pressure. Uh, okay, see there's 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 okay maybe too much opacity here. Jitter. Okay, but starting to get there, starting to get there. Um, now you don't want that too kind of fade it out or else it starts to to let through all the information from behind it. So let's look into scattering. Uh, let's see how what scattering is doing. Maybe that's too much. So let's turn off scattering and let's put on color dynamics and let's fade in um, let's fade in background and foreground. So I'm gonna sample off the image uh, and just X to switch it over. Okay. Now, foreground and background jitter. Okay, that seems to be going well. Let's make that a bit darker. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's starting to get there. And as you can see, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's starting to get there. And again, if you experiment around with this, you can start to even make, you know, trees. If you have a tree brush, of course. Uh, you can start to actually make trees and sample out trees and and I mean it's just a great way of adding those little touches um, to your visuals and again you're free to experiment I mean look let's put a texture on it and let's see what or dual brush sometimes works really well that's kind of multiplying two brushes together see what that can do and that's creating something totally different so again it's 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 all about experimentation you know and it's it's about making something out of nothing uh, with simple brushes and not even having to use um, pretty much any textures. So I hope you enjoy this, guys. Remember to check out the download section and our tutorial section. And I promise, I know you guys have been asking a lot about uh, courses. We're trying to develop one, a very simple one. Um, but yeah, keep those ideas coming and we'll try and develop as much as we can and really give back to the community. Uh, also, feel free to check out a couple of our latest works on rq9visualization.com. Uh, we enjoy it and hope you enjoy it as well. And I hope to bring you soon another great tutorial and look forward to your feedback. Have a great day and a great week. And remember, just do it in post. It's easier. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone, and have a good day.